Hey everyone, Doug here with BNH. At last, Sony has launched the latest in the A7R series of cameras, the A7R5. It's the newest iteration of Sony's high resolution segment of the Alpha line, and the updates here come down largely to functionality and processing power. The main processor here has been upgraded to the Bionz XR, bringing with it full support for new raw photo modes, 8K video recording, refined auto exposure algorithms, and so, so much more. But the real upgrade here is the additional AI processor that's been added to the A7R5, giving it AI-assisted autofocusing. We're gonna look at some real-world examples here in a studio and on location to see how the camera performs. Being a part of the R line in Sony's Alpha 7 series, the A7R5 aims for high resolution capture first and foremost, but it's also historically delivered on nearly every front of a professional camera. In other words, it's an extremely well-rounded high performance camera. You're looking at an ample 61 megapixels of resolution here from the Exmor R sensor, which gives studio and creative photographers lots to work with in post-production. Now, to be fair, the A7R 4 had 61 megapixels as well, but here we see that paired with Sony's most recent Bionz XR processor, meaning it can maximize image quality, shoot more pictures to the buffer, improve the in-body stabilizer algorithm, and adds way more to the camera's video functionality. So let's move over to our studio shoot to see what this camera is capable of. So we're here in the studio space, and as you can see, we've got a photographer behind us already putting the A7R5 through its paces. There's a lot of sunlight here, and you can see it's very bright behind me. And that's great because the A7R5 is rated for 15 stops of dynamic range. So we've got a lot of tricky lighting situations here. It's great to have light, but it means it's harsh. There's a lot of shadows and harsh highlights at the same time, but we're gonna see how it looks. Now, there are some key features we really have to talk about today with the A7R5. Probably top of the order is the addition of the AI processing chip, which helps with AF calculations. And it includes some really interesting features like this human pose prediction, which allows it to kind of estimate where a person's going to land in the frame as they pose, which helps it get up to 60% improved AF performance. There's also the improved eight stop in-body image stabilizer, which gives unprecedented performance. And probably the biggest addition overall is the Bionz XR processor, which is finally in the R line after having debuted in the S line a few years ago. So we've got our photographer, our model, of course, our camera. So we're gonna see how this works in a real world studio situation. Right from the start, we knew we had to test the autofocus performance. The A7R5's AF is on another level, and even though I've already brought up the AI processing a few times, it is worth knowing that it also sees an increase in phase detection points, which are now up to 693 points, covering 79% of the sensor area. Those same points are completely active in APS-C crop mode, providing 100% coverage. Real-time recognition AF, that is the overall name for the system that's driven now by the AI processing chip. It offers a few predictive responses and ways that the system can look for specific objects or familiar patterns within the frame. So for example, it's gonna look for faces, it's gonna look for eyes, but it does that based on trained models. So in the case of human posing, it's even better because it's able to look and predict how humans are going to land as they move through the frame. So they may rotate their face, may move in or out of the frame, which of course changes their uh, distance to the lens. And all of that can be sort of predicted based on the AI model. AF here also supports a wide variety of subjects, including of course humans, animals, birds, insects, cars, trains, and even airplanes. The AI processor can essentially be set to look for recognizable features within each of those subject categories. So you can see here the head and eye. It sees the head first and then eventually catches the eye almost instantaneously. There we go, yep. So the real-time eye recognition is incredibly fast thanks to the AI processing. So I have both the A7R 4 and 5 here with me, and at first glance, you know, superficially speaking, they do look very, very similar, but there are some key differences. Now, the biggest change on the body for the 5 has to be this four-axis multi-angle screen. Now, most of the R-series cameras have always had a screen that comes out like this. It tilts outward, which gives you a little bit of flexibility for looking from above or below. This incorporates that functionality plus flip out LCD screen. So this is a brand new 3.2 inch LCD screen, by the way, it looks gorgeous, but this allows it to get out of the way of the cabling on the side. 
so that adds a little more functionality to it. The display itself is also new. At 3.2 inches, it's just under 2.1 million dots and even supports DCI-P3 color. It's gorgeous as always, what else can I say? Now the other key change here for viewing, you obviously can't see it unless you put your eye up to it, is the new EVF. This is a 9.44 million dot EVF. It's got a 0.90 times magnification and supports 120 hertz refresh rate. So everything should look clear and smooth in motion here. So the other notable change comes down to the dials. Now they don't look too different, but if you look at the four here, you'll notice that this is a hard stopping EV compensation dial. So you can't really do much more with that than adjust your EV values. Whereas on the R5, this is now a freely rotating customizable dial that can be used to do pretty much any exposure adjustment you want. So aside from that, you'll notice there's also the custom one button, which has been designated as a dedicated record button and now the mode dial has an additional toggle beneath it to quickly go between movie stills and SNQ mode, whereas before it used to only be on the dial itself. Now when it comes to recording, that's also a big change here. Sony has for the last few cameras now been using a wonderful combined SDXC CF Express Type A slot. It's also here on the R5. You'll notice that's a huge change up from just the SDXC on the R4. Looking on the back side, it's also largely identical, except because of that move of the custom one button, the record button has been flipped with it. The connections and ports on the side are also very similar between the two cameras, except that the A7R5 now includes a full-size HDMI port, which is what you'll be using if you wanna shoot 16-bit RAW over HDMI. Now, there's also a USB-C port, just like there was on the 4, however, it now supports full power delivery specs, so you're gonna have a lot faster charging with the A7R5 over USB-C. So of course video has also seen a huge upgrade with the a7r5 it's up to 8k now which is pretty huge and that comes kind of as a combination of inherited technologies from the a7s3 and the a1 and the fact that this has a 61 megapixel sensor so you have tons of resolution for that 8k image in fact there's even a super 35 4k crop mode that still has so much resolution that it can downsample from a 6.2k readout which is pretty wild. The highlight specs here are the 8K video at 24 and 25 FPS, 4K video up to 60 FPS, and 1080p video up to 120 FPS. And yes, those are all native frame rates. So that's not just in the SNQ modes. Now it also has the latest Sony color profiles, including Acinetone and S-Log3. Of course, it has HLG HDR support as well. So you can record HDR movies straight out of the camera. And there's even 16-bit raw recording over HDMI if you want to record externally. So just when you thought in-body image stabilization couldn't get any better, the a7R5 has bumped its compensation up to a possible eight stops of stabilization. Now this is due to algorithmic optimizations and improved communications between the body and lens, along with a more accurate gyro sensor. Anyone who's familiar with Sony stabilization knows that it's pretty hard to live without it these days. Even without things like gimbals or support rigs, I held a pretty steady shot and it stayed in focus the whole time. So although the megapixel count hasn't changed between the A7R4 and A7R5, what has changed is the processor behind it. The Bionz XR is finally in the R line, and that means we see increases in speed, processing ability, codec options. That of course makes things like 10 FPS bursts possible, which when I made the crew throw countless amounts of leaves, it really shows. Now, though this isn't faster than the a7R4, the 5 can shoot for far longer at up to 583 compressed RAWs or 547 lossless RAWs or over 1,000 JPEGs. Lastly, image quality itself, because of the additional processing, is improved. In photo mode, at least, you get 15 stops of dynamic range. So let's talk a little bit about some of the new still and video recording options here. 
On the still side of things, the a7R5 introduces the lossless RAW mode, previously seen in the a7 IV, and it's a great compromise option for those who want full image quality at a slightly smaller file size than completely uncompressed RAW. You also, of course, get the normal uncompressed RAW and compressed RAWs, which is lossy, with RAW resolutions available in 15 megapixel, 26 megapixel, and 61 megapixel modes. Aside from the typical JPEG options, the a7R5 also adds HEAF recording for higher bit depth stills. When it comes to video, the codec options are numerous. Sony's XAVC-S returns here for standard HD recording, but XAVC-HS is now present for both 4K and 8K shooting. 8K shooting is possible up to 10-bit 420, while 4K and below offers 10-bit 422. For those wondering, with full frame 4K recording, you get a full sensor readout with no cropping at all up to 30 FPS, while in 4K 60 and in 8K, there's a small 1.2 times crop from the full frame image. In regards to frame rates, 4K 60 is available as a native frame rate and as an SMQ frame rate. 1080p recording, by the way, is available up to 120 FPS, also as a native frame rate or an SMQ rate. Color-wise, that 10-bit recording comes in handy on the a7R5, as the camera now includes S-Log3, S-Cinetone, and HLG HDR recording. Lastly, looking at some of the extra functionality on the a7R5, the camera can act as a UVC webcam if you desire, making it a good option for streaming setups over a USB cable. The neat thing here, though, is that the camera can still record UHD resolution in camera during streaming. The Wi-Fi AC feature has been bumped with 2x2 MIMO support for faster communication between devices, beating out, believe it or not, even the A92. The USB-C connector now supports 10 gigabit per second throughput, making file transfers lightning quick. And by the way, the USB-C connection has been capable of charging since the previous model, but now it supports the power delivery spec, bringing with it four times faster charging than the A7R4. So that's all the time we've got with the A7R5. There's a lot more going on under the hood here than some may realize, and the result is that it's becoming harder and harder to miss that shot. Bigger buffers, AI-assisted autofocusing, faster AE calculations, more customizable buttons means that almost every function of this camera is improved to make shooting in the studio more reliable and easier than ever. The inclusion of 8K video means that you'll have unparalleled freedom to compose the image in post or use the extra processing power to get gorgeous 4K images with robust codec options. Overall, it's a powerhouse of a camera that should work for a wide range of professional shooters. Let us know in the comments below how you could put the a7R5 to work. I'm Doug with b and and I'll see you next time.